All right, guys, we're continuing in Acts chapter 23 in this extremely corrupt and just absolutely crazy, just unprofessional, ridiculous courtroom uh, where Paul finds himself in Jerusalem. And I, I don't know, when, when I read my New Testament, stuff they did to Jesus, stuff they do to Paul here, it is appalling to me what goes on in the courthouses in Jerusalem. I mean, it's just absolutely appalling. It's ridiculous. Yesterday, the, the, the high priest is commanding people to punch Paul in the face during a hearing. I mean, we just kind of looked at that briefly. But let's keep going today. Uh, so Acts 23, we'll start in verse 6, okay? You can watch yesterday's uh, whenever you want to if you didn't get to. Uh, it says, Now when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other were Pharisees, he cried out to the council, saying, Brothers, I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. And when he had said this, a dissension arose between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That means an argument, okay? <clears throat> uh, it arose between the Pharisees and Sadducees. The assembly was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit. But the Pharisees acknowledged them all. And when a great clamor arose and some of the scribes of the Pharisees' party stood up and contended sharply, saying, We find nothing wrong with this man. What if a spirit or an angel spoke to him? And when the dissension became violent, the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded the soldiers to go down and take him away from among them by force and bring him into the barracks. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify also in Rome. That's where we'll stop today. That was verse 11. Okay, so this, this is supposed to be like a hearing to figure out if Paul's guilty of anything. Remember a big angry riot had broken out and this Roman tribune had to bring him in and they're going to try to scourge and flog him to interrogate him, and he's a citizen, so they don't, so they have to have a hearing. And so they bring in this, this council of Sadducees and Pharisees to ask them what, what the big problem with Paul is. They, he knows it's some sort of religious issue, and he's like, okay, Paul's a religious guy, the Sadducees are some religious leaders, the Pharisees are religious leaders, let's bring them all in a room and see what happens. And uh, what happens is just ridiculous. These religious leaders who are supposed to be at a court hearing, are they just get violent and fight with each other in the middle of it to the point where the guy has to take Paul out of there by force for his own safety. Um, it says, when the dissension became violent, the tribune, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, commanded him to, to cut it all down and, and get Paul out of there for safety's sake. Um, it just when it became violent, as though that's a normal course of events at a court hearing. I mean, my goodness, uh, it's it's shocking. But that's not the point. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of going on with that because they did this to Jesus. They're doing it to Paul. Like, come on, guys. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what do you and I get out of this? How does this apply to us? I see a couple things here. Number one, let's talk about Pharisees and Sadducees, because these are goofy little names for these groups of people that we don't have anymore. Like, you don't, I don't know anybody who's a Pharisee. I don't know anybody who's a Sadducee. These are two groups of people. These are not careers. You don't, like, become a Pharisee when you grow up. It, um, it's more like, hear me out with this, but it's more like a political party than it is a job or something. It's not really a political party either. But there were these two, like or maybe denominations, maybe you want to think of them as Catholics and Protestants. I mean, that wouldn't quite add up either, but um, you might start to understand what's going on. It is two different groups. They're both Jewish. They're, they're both Jews that live in Jerusalem. They have their uh, their traditions and all this other stuff, and they they regarded their faith, their religion, in two different kinds of ways. The Pharisees, it says, you know, they believe in a resurrection of the dead. They believe in angels and spirits and this other stuff. Um, and the Sadducees don't. Okay. Um, another thing that we know about it, Pharisees believed in their Old Testament. Their, their, their books of Moses, they would have called them, or the law. 
they they held that in extremely high value. Uh, the prophets, the Psalms, all that. And Pharisees were people who just who read their Bibles constantly, took them literally everywhere they could. Um, they memorized huge swaths of Scripture. Sometimes they would they would memorize all of it, the entire Old Testament. Uh, sometimes they would only memorize the first five books, the, the books of the law, the books of Moses. But man, they they took it seriously, very seriously. Um, and they had all these rules. Jesus kind of t- chides them for it often. He says, look, you guys are so serious, so legalistic about it. You tithe, you give 10% of like the mint. When you grow a piece of mint in your garden, you take one out of every 10 leaves and give it to the temple. I mean, they're so meticulous. Their Sabbath days, they, they, they had a whole measurement for how many day, steps you're allowed to take, how far you're allowed to walk on the Sabbath, whether you're allowed to eat grain that you find by the road um, on the Sabbath day, whether Jesus is allowed to heal people on the Sabbath day. I mean, they took their Old Testament stuff word for word seriously, okay? Uh, the Sadducees, on the other hand, did not. They didn't really pay a ton of attention to that. They would have certainly known their their Old Testaments, probably better than you and I do. But their big thing was the temple. They said the temple is holy. The temple is God's location. Let's keep the temple clean. Let's keep keep the temple sacred. The uh, the Pharisees weren't against the temple. They had they had God's word and the temple. The Sadducees primarily said our big focus is on the temple. The, the Sadducees also had a tendency to be, they were more likely to make alliances with Rome um, because they wanted their temple building to stand there on that city. And if they had to to sign away the, the freedom of Israel to Rome in order to keep the city from being attacked, hey, we'll do what it takes to protect this temple. Um, anyway, that's some basics. So uh, <clears throat> Paul sees that there's these two groups, Sadducees and Pharisees. Um, and the Sadducees, everywhere they're mentioned, I'm pretty sure, I'd have to really study it and I have it, but everywhere that I can remember a Sadducee being mentioned, it always says right next, a Sadducee was there, Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. Like, that's just what it says. They don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. That was like one of their main things. They don't believe in it. And that's what it says here. Um uh, verse 7, a dissension arose between Pharisees and Sadducees. The assembly was divided, for the Sadducees say there's no resurrection. They all know angel, no spirit either. Um, so as soon as Paul says, I'm on trial for the resurrection of the dead, he's talking about Jesus. Jesus resurrected from the dead. That is the linchpin. That's the thing that holds our faith together and makes Christianity true. It makes it real. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then nothing else that he did matters. Okay, I don't want to be a Christian if he just died and stayed dead. There's no point in it. Okay, zero. Jesus resurrected from the dead, and that's that's that. Um, he's on trial for that reason, brothers. I am a Pharisee, a son of Pharisees. It is with respect to the hope and the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial. That's why he's here. Okay, and now what happens? He's trying to establish common ground with these Pharisees. Hey, I'm I'm a Pharisee, a son of a Pharisee, and I believe in the resurrection of the dead. That's why I'm here. So you guys maybe ought to listen in and start paying attention because you actually have a lot in common with me, and we might get somewhere here. And he would be happy to talk to the Sadducees about the temple and where the temple resides and where God lives now. God, You are God's temple. He, he, I'm sure he would have gotten to that sooner or later if they had let him. But as soon as he says this, a fight breaks out. They don't even listen to him. They just start fighting. It's ridiculous. Okay? So anyway, um, I, I, I'm getting worked up about this. I don't know why I'm getting worked up about it, but I am. Um, a fight breaks out, and they don't really get to hear him out. They don't get to hear the rest of it. But listen, the way you live matters. Do you live as though there's a resurrection from the dead, or do you live as though there is not? If you, if you live as though there's a resurrection from the dead, it means that the, the way you live this life, you're not going to care a whole lot about yourself. You're not going to be so always worried about your health, your wealth, your dreams, your ambitions. You're going to be looking for Christ. You're going to be looking, let me make Christ be my entire life because I have eternal life coming up. There's a resurrection of the dead. I have eternity to, to, to work through any of that stuff. But for this brief period of time in this life, 
I can suffer for Christ, okay? Um, that, that would be your mentality if you believe in a resurrection that you'd be living differently. Um, if you don't, if you're living as though there, this life is all there is, and let me cling on to every breath I can take, every year of my life I can keep for me, to live for me, to be self-centered, self-oriented, um, if that's where it's all at for you, then you are living as though uh, you are living as a Sadducee, as somebody who, who doesn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Even if you say you believe in it, if you live like you don't, then, I mean, actions speak louder than words, right? So, anyway, that's the first thing. Let's start living as though there really is a resurrection, as there really is eternal life. So why do we have to hold on and worry so hard about this one? Okay, let's start living like, like that. Uh, secondly, um, something else I see here. And I've said this a few times. Paul keeps a level head. Paul is trying to testify to the truth of Jesus. These guys aren't, they would just rather fight. Okay, so don't don't get into that. Man, there's a lot that you could fight about if you want to. If you want to look at somebody from a different political party, a different uh, denomination of Christianity, and all you want to do is fight because that person thinks different thoughts than you think, um, let's not do that. There, there's, there's a testament to be shared about the resurrection of Jesus here, going on in this exact room when Paul's talking. And uh, they don't even want to listen. They'd rather just fight about doctrines. And it's, it's ridiculous, and it's laughable, and it's, it's... If you're the Roman guy, and you look at this situation, are you going to be interested in this, this God that the Sadducees and the Pharisees believe in? Or are you going to think, these guys are crazy, and you're going to get Paul, Paul, you know, you're the guy they, they're all mad at, but you seem completely reasonable to me. Come on, Paul, let's get out of here before they kill you and maybe kill us. Um, Paul, Paul is a witness to Christ here. These guys, whatever religion they're believing in, just looks bad, right? Okay, so let's not fall into that trap. And then another thing I see happening here, um, Paul is trying to establish some common ground with these Pharisees, I think, to get them to listen. Um, saying, look, I'm, I'm a Pharisee, I'm a son of Pharisee, and uh, I believe in a resurrection of the dead. He's trying to build some common ground. He's not <clears throat> saying, I agree with everything the Pharisees say. He's saying, Pharisees, you'll be able to agree with a lot that I'm saying, so hear me out. Um, we have a tendency, maybe it's an American thing, maybe it's everywhere, I don't know. Um, there's a strong tendency, though. If somebody says something you believe in and agree with, that you just go all in with that. I, th I think we do this politically a lot. Your your favorite political candidate is 2020, right? You like Biden or you like Trump. Um, you know, I, 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 if you, you don't have to like everything that Donald Trump does. You don't have to like everything that Joe Biden does. And you don't have to hate everything that Donald Trump does or hate everything Joe Biden does, right? Like... You can, you can pick and choose the things that you believe in and the, th the common ground that you have. And, and I think if Christians are willing to share common ground with people of either political party or, or other organizations altogether, look, we, we share this in common, okay? We, we want this. We believe in this. Ultimately, when it comes down to voting, I'm going to have to pick one or the other. But I don't have to love every single thing that President Trump does It just it, to vote for him. And, and we don't have to make this binary lifestyle thing. I'm a Sadducee. I'm a Pharisee. I believe in a resurrection. I don't. I'll fight you in a courtroom over it. Like, we don't have to do that. We're Christians. We're a third party. We can say, look, I like this. I like that. I like that. This other guy, he, I like the things he's saying about this and this. These things I don't like, and those things I don't like. And we, we can establish common ground for the purpose of talking about Jesus. When there's issues that we don't agree with, we can stand firm on them, but we don't have to make idols out of our political candidates. We don't have to make idols out of their platforms and say that we agree with every thing, single thing on their platform and we hate everything on the other guy's platform. We don't want to do that. Our country has enough of that. Okay, So there's a couple different application points for you there. Um, and we'll continue looking at this and seeing where things go. But like I told you a couple chapters back, Paul, the, the, the missionary work of, that Paul was doing is in a new chapter now, and it's going to be a lot of courtrooms, a lot of this sort of stuff from this point on. So God bless you. 
Um, let's stay faithful to the Lord. Let's live differently. Let's live like there's a resurrection, like there really is eternal life. Let's live that way. Not just say we believe it, but actually live like we believe it. Okay, that's one application point. Let's keep a level head. Let's not get all up in arguments and yelling and stuff at one another. Let's be witnesses for Christ and be aware at all times that we're witnesses for Christ. And let's not let's just not even get into these big battles that the that the society that the culture is fighting. Let's uh, let's be a third party. Let's point out what we do like, what we don't like, and talk about the direction that we Christians can be moving. And I think a lot of people will like it if they hear it that way. But if we just sound like one side of, of a two-sided war, man, we're not, we're, we're missing half our potential audience. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Um, I'll see you tomorrow right at noon. We'll continue here in chapter 23 with more and more corruption and evil. Okay. Paul, just coming directly against Paul. God bless you.